2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. So my old API is having as public class my mapper extends MapReduce base implements mapper and my map function is having as key value output collector and reporter and new API is having just public class mapper name extends mapper so now explain me whether it is old API or new API <laughs> okay no problem no issues so definitely it will take some time to remember these things but I just wanted to convey you like as yesterday I had explained you those things I just wanted to show you okay so all good so let's go ahead so what I'm trying is I'm dividing each of the word again so it is as similar as my word count program and I'm collecting everything into my output collector so if you remember output collector is the guy who collects all the key value pairs right so he will kept it all these values into his pocket so word comma one word comma one word comma one so that is what my mapper function is so there is no difference with my mod count program and okay let me show you my reducer function so again if you see the reducer function here do you find any difference here again it is of course as similar as my word count program so there is no difference in my mapper and reducer because the functionality of my mapper and reducer is not going to be changed anyways right the only thing what I am doing is I am deciding to which reducer it should go but the reducer functionality is not at all changing so that is the only reason I am having same logic for mapper and reducer so here I am declaring a word count a variable and initializing it to 0 and until it has values I mean in the sense until all the values of that particular key goes to end I am add, adding all those values to my word count so for example if my first value uh, I am getting it as high comma 1 comma 1 comma 1 after this reduce function until all these ones are processed I will continue the whole loop and finally I will get the output as high comma 4 and I am throwing it to my output collector to handle all these values so my key will be here and my word count value will have as 4 so ok so can we go ahead so let's see our driver program so driver is the guy who is changing a bit so it is all same till this program till this part of the program right so I'm just calling the tool runner and I am checking okay let me show you the calling part so here from here my program execution starts and I am calling it as tool runner dot run with my programmer name and arguments so the arguments is nothing but my input files and out output files so I am checking whether if my arguments are not equal to 2 so if at all I am not having any input file or output file path locations it will throw an <coughs> excuse me it will throw an error right so if that's not the case so everything is good whatever I am sending that is fine then it will come into this part of the code and it will the first line will get all the configuration properties that were declared by my admin so it will get all those things and if you come to this step I am declaring as mapred.reduce.tasks equal to 2 
So here I am declaring right number of reducers equal to 2. So if at all I want to go with 3 reducers, I will give it as mapred.reduce.tasks equal to 3. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where I am going to declare my number of reducers. So the mapper function is same, the reducer function is same, function is same in the sense the functionality is same and coming to the driver program along with giving the mapper formats and reducer formats I am declaring the number of reducers as well in my driver program so again these are all the common things right the input format I am giving as set input paths and read the argument 0 that is my first input file as the input path and again my output format I am reading the second argument which is my output file which has the final output values and here I am setting all the names so again if you observe here I am declaring a partitioner new partitioner right so I am writing a customized partitioner in my program instead of going with the default partitioner so what if the case I don't give this partitioner here so I'm not writing any partitioner here okay but still I am giving number of reducers as two so what will happen in this case can anyone guess so in my program I'm not having a partitioner function but I'm having the reducer as two so how would my <coughs> output looks like? We had discussed on it. So how it would be separated by default? Come on guys, it is just nothing but hash code, right? Not equally. The logic which we discussed is hash code logic. So hash code logic is the default logic that should happen. Oh my god, where I had written. It's gone. Hey, I had written so many things. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. So it all... Right? This is what it happens. Am I correct? It should go by hash code, right? So as I'm giving two reducers, it should get as key hash code modulo 2. Is that fine? Guys, are you able to sync up with me? because it's very important okay okay cool so this is what default logic is so isn't that the custom partitioner okay Rahul is having a question isn't that for custom partitioner only or for default so this is happens for default so if I write a custom partitioner I will say like club heart and spade go to reducer 0 diamond go to reducer 1 or diamond go to reducer 0 club heart spade go to reducer 1 so can I change this modular function because it is an internal function that is called by my Java program right so I cannot change this hash code values so by default whatever the reducer it generates through my hash code function that is definitely a default value I cannot change it but if at all I want to change it like Okay, diamond go to reducer 0 or spade go to reducer 0 it is in my hands but the default value is not in my hands I cannot go and change this hash code value by writing a new Java hash code program right so it should happen and it will happen for all the things so that is what I am trying to convey you if at all I am having more than one reducer the default partitioner comes into picture so it will place it role so internally it will do all these things to decide which key should go to which reducer okay so first we will try to okay 
I will try to run this program to explain you how the output will be. So what I am doing is I am going with the default partitioner. So whatever whatever the partitioner I had written, some partitioner logic I had written, but I am not showing you. But right now I am going with a default partitioner by having number of reducers as two. Okay, let's see how it works. Okay, so let me copy the same thing here. Okay, what I am trying to do is I am reading the oval input as my input file. So if you remember, my oval input is having this value. So I am taking this particular text as my input. I am writing it into two reducers. And it will be in my oval output 1. So that is what my output path is. Okay. So let's go ahead and run it. So now the map function is finished. So it is showing as 100% and now the reducer function will start. So okay, it seems like both the functions are finished. So now you will get all the statistics. So fine. Everything is good. Mm. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and see. Everything seems to be fine. Oval out 1 is our output file, right? Oval out 1. Okay. So now you are seeing two output files, right? Success and logs are common for all the programs. So if you remember, success will show you is nothing okay it will show you, say you just the success and logs will show you all the history so if at all you want to see all the logs I mean these logs will be helpful whenever you get any error so that you can go into it and see where it has errored out in general you will see the errors in the terminal as well but if you want to go into deeper a bit deeper and see that what are the statistics that might be bumped up then you can go into these logs and have a look of that Okay, so coming out to the next actual outputs, so it is going to two files that is reducer 0 and reducer 1. So the reducer 0 will be mentioned as part 0000, 0, 0, 0 and the reducer 1 will be pointed as part 0, 0, 0, 0001. So if at all I am having three reducers, it will look like 0000, 0, 0, 0 as one file, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 as second file and the third file as 0002 ok so if you see here it has gone by default so I am having a comma 1 and as example is in of 1 as so I am having all these words in my reducer 1 and in my reducer 2 I am having all the remaining words One second. No, 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 no. It shouldn't happen like this. Ah. 
had commented this, right? It shouldn't happen like this. Let me try it once again. I think it has taken the old jar file. Okay, okay, now I got it, why it went like that. Mm. Guys, can you tell me why we got the output in such a way? One mistake we had given here. What's that? I had created a jar file as partitioner and I had given some other jar file, right? Hadoop jar oval dot jar. So it has taken some other jar file. Right? Uh, able to understand this? I had taken some other jar file and that's the reason it got some other output. But the jar which I had created for my program is partitioner dot jar, right? That's the reason he had given like that. Okay, let me cancel. And let me try to run the program again. On two. Hmm. <laughs> Good. Partitioner, partitioner. This is the spelling I had given. Mm -hmm. Here Rahul, I will show you, don't worry. Yes, this is what I am expecting. So, the reason why we got some error is, I had taken some other jar file instead of my new programmer program changes jar file so do you agree with me is everybody fine with me okay good so here by default everything is going separately based on the hash code logic so let partitioner a and divide for functionality in of the words so all these are coming into reducer 1 so that means I am having all these hash code values modulo 2 as 0 that is the reason it is going to reducer 0 so something internally a hash code is derived for this let word and that value is definitely an even number and so that's the reason it is going to reducer 0 and when you take this reducer 1, you are having all the remaining values. This as consonants, example, is, map and so on and so forth. So all these values are returning an hash code value of odd numbers. And that is the reason it is giving a reminder of 1. And so it is going to reducer 1. 
so it's fine with everyone are you able to understand can we go ahead can we go ahead and see the remaining partitioner program the actual partitioner in the sense the customized partitioner okay good so this is what the default logic is about and coming to my actual partitioner this is what I am trying to do here so I am writing a class called as oval partitioner and in that I am writing a function called as int get partitioner so I am reading the key a value and also the number of partitioners so the input to my partitioner program is key value and comma 2 so if at all I here I am giving a condition as if start with oval for the key it will return a value of 0 so if it's that's not the case it will return a value of 1 so imagine if my key is let mm, okay so okay take this value so if my key is this when it comes into this part of the function it will check like whether my particular key starts with a oval so t is not a oval so then that is the reason it will return a value of 1 so it means it is saying that okay if at all the word is not starting with a oval go to reducer 1 so if at all I am returning 1 means it will go to reducer 1 if I am returning 0 means it will go to reducer 0 so this is not a oval and so go to reducer 1 that is what it is saying and how it's going to check this oval so it we are writing a function called as start with oval so it will return a value of true or false because I am writing it as a boolean function so every boolean function is having two values that is true and false so it should return even the true or false with my this start with oval function so first of all what I am checking is if key equal to null or key is empty return false okay so if at all my key itself is having a null value or maybe it's an empty so there is a difference between a null and space right so I am checking both of the things null or is empty I am returning false value if that's not the case go to next line I am reading the character into uppercase and I am trying to convert it into a string so for example if I am getting this or maybe as this as will be read as as is read as <laughs> as is converted into this as and I am checking if that character is equal to A E I O U so these are our ovals right you all know about it right so I don't think that I have to explain what is oval so the ovals in our alphabets are A E I O U so if at all my first keyword is starting with A E I or O U written true or else written false so if at all my words are A E I O U go to reducer 0 and if that's not the case go to reducer 1 so this is what my custom logic I am writing here so I am saying that go to reducer 0 or 1 based on whether your word starts with a oval letter or not so this is what my logic is so once I execute that program I will get my values as oval output 1 so this is what the first one we had executed earlier if you remember right so here I am having all oval values if you observe A E I O U so all the words that were starting with A E I O U's are coming into reducer 1 and all the values remaining or else maybe not starting with oval letters or going into reducer 2 
Any questions on this? So don't worry guys, I would be sharing all these programs with you. So you can have a test run in your systems and as well I would suggest you to do some changes on these programs or try to add some more logics to the same programs and try running them so that you will try to understand much more things on this. So I will give you a minute time to go through this logic so that if you have any questions just let me know okay So all good guys, can we go ahead with the PPT now? Oh sure. Let me show you from here, okay? So that you will be able to see all the program. Okay? So, partitioner have a question. Let me look into it. So your question is the partitioner will return either a value of 0 or 1. Once that is returned to driver, what happens with that value? So that's what I mean it will have a look like whether it is returning one value or two values. So that is the reason I am giving my number of reducers as 2. So internally driver will come to know like okay I am having two files and I am having two return values. So let me have the first return value to reducer 0 and let me have the second reducer value to I mean return value to reducer 1 so in my output program or maybe in my output paths I am just giving only one file right but here if you observe the driver itself is creating two files internally part 0 and part 1 right so it is dividing like okay return 0 values to part 0 and return 1 values to part 1 so driver will take over that functionality so for me I had given only one output file oval out one but internally that output file is having number of subdivisions based on your reducer value is it fine?
Is it fine, Rahul? Okay, so got it. Framework takes care of it based on number of exactly. Framework is going to tell you that which reducers, how many reducers it has to declare internally, what is should be the reducer name. So here the reducer name is part 0000, right? I haven't given this reducer name anywhere, even in my program or my execution command, right? So driver or the framework is going to take care of all these things. So I just wanted to get them in two separate files. That's it. That's what my requirement is. Maybe I can do, what I can do is, I can export all these values into some notepads and then after that, as this is a very small file, uh, you will not be able to imagine like what I can do with these outputs. So it is just a small information. But in general, this will be very, very huge. All these files will be very huge. And you will not be able to understand even whether you program executed correctly or not. For example, if you say, take the same example with a very huge file, will you be able to do that or able to check it manually like all your oval words went to first file and all your non-oval in the sense consonant words went into part 2 file? No, right? You will not be able to decide all those things. So that is the reason you will have many other reporting tools as well which will let you know or which will uh, help you to do analysis on your output files. So that is the reason even the reporting tools are very important in our Hadoop. So if we had three reducers, our partition class would have to return a possible three values, right? Exactly. It will return 0, 1 and 2 because, I mean, if at all it's a custom partitioner, I will write it as per my wish. Maybe in my oval partitioner program, I will try to see that, okay, A, E, I and I go to reducer 1, O and U go to reducer 2 and all the remaining consonants go to reducer 0. That may be my functionality. If at all, I want to have it with three reducers. If I'm not writing my custom partitioner, then it will go based on the hash code. So just to explain you the partitioner functionality, I had taken two different types, that is vowels and consonants. But if, if at all, if you go into actual real world, there may be different cases, right? Just to explain you, I had taken a ovals example, that's it. So, can I go ahead with the PPT? Or is anybody else is having any questions on the code? Okay, good. So let me finish. Okay, first let me log out of this or else it will take huge. Okay, guys, I'm closing my Eclipse. It's fine with everyone, right? Because my system will be very slow. If at all, I'm in a go-to meeting with the VM open. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let me do it later. So, coming back to our PPTs, where we are. We have finished this part, this part.
and we came to this part, right? So partitioner decides which reducer is responsible for a particular key. So if you see the control here, the partitioner is calling, controls the partition of keys and it will act on the intermediate map outputs. The key is just the key or a subset of a key is used to derive the partitioner typically by hash function. So if at all I am having a default partitioner in the sense I am not writing any code for a partitioner, it will go as per the hash code. And this hash code functionality will come into picture only if I am having number of reducers greater than 1. So the partitioner divides up the key space, controls which reducer each intermediate key and its associated value goes to. Often the default behavior is fine. So most of the times if we want to do some analysis, the default behavior is good until and unless I want them to write in a separate files based on my some special features. The default is the hash partitioner and I will declare a partitioner as job dot set partitioner class as hash partitioner dot class. So this hash partitioner can be any of your name. So this is just a sample default value I had given. So it is just the name of your partitioner whatever you are going to write and you are going to declare this particular value in your driver class and it is mandatory. So okay I think fine. Shall we start the red combiner tomorrow? It's already 8.20 or maybe just I will just introduce you what a combiner is. Maybe we can see with some examples tomorrow and we can do some hands on on combiner as well. Is it fine? I will just try to introduce what combiner is. Okay. Often mappers produce large amount of intermediate data. So as I told you, we would be writing these programs on big data, right? So that is what the keyword here. So often mappers produce large amounts of intermediate data as our input file is very, very huge. The data must be passed to the reducers. So don't you think that the network traffic that is going to the reducer which is going to be passed through the intermediate values might be very huge and don't you think that uh, our cluster will be you know I mean a lot of workload will be there on our cluster so don't you think that so in order just to reduce the network traffic we had divide we had introduced one more functionality called as combiner. So you can call the combiner as a terminology with mini reducer as well. So this can result in a lot of network traffic and it is often possible to specify a combiner like a mini reducer. Runs locally on a single mapper output. So for each of the mapper output I will be having one more combiner. So, it would be like So for each of the mapper, I would be having one more combiner. So for this cards program, maybe the combiner might not show you the actual functionality. But I will continue with this example and I will explain one more example as well. Okay, 
so for each of the mapper i will be having a separate combiner so whatever the mapper produces the intermediate values first it will go to combiner before it goes to reducer so what combiner does is suppose my mapper has generated values as suppose imagine that first mapper has generated value as let me go down mapper 1 has generated values as shit and mapper 2 again has and mapper 3 might be having like this okay. 6 plus 4 is 10 so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 12 13 okay so totally I'm having 13 right these two together as 4 1 2 3 10 13 so my output from my reducer should be club comma 13 right desired output So just imagine that these are the intermediate values that were generated by my all my four mappers. So mapper 1 is generating same key of clubs with two values club comma 1 and club comma 1 and mapper 2 is generating six times the same value club comma 1 1 1 1 1 and mapper 3 as club comma 1 club comma 1 club comma 1 and mapper 4 again as club comma 1 and club comma 1. So whenever my combiner comes into picture what it will does is it will read the output I mean the intermediate output values of mapper 1 and it will combine within the mapper itself it will give the output as mapper 1 club comma 2 okay I see that mapper 1 is having two values for the same key let me do the functionality of reducer before the actual reducer is called for my particular mapper function so that's what the combiner thinks and it will combine this club comma 2 I mean it will combine all these values and generate club comma 2 for mapper 1 so next time the second combiner will come into picture and says okay I'm having six values for the same key let me combine it here only before going to reducer so it will generate like this and this one the third combiner will come into picture for this mapper and it will generate the value as 3 and again the fourth mapper it will give us club comma 2 so now all these values will be the exact inputs for my reducer so these values will be going into my reducer instead of the actual mapper outputs so that's what the actual functionality of combiner now when these values are going into my reducer the network traffic is less right instead of passing 13 separate key values it will be passing only 4 key values right so and now the actual aggregation functionality comes into picture and it will give as club comma 13 from my reducer thirteen. 
So that is how the combiner tries to reduce the traffic from mapper till to reducer. So tomorrow we will try to see like where, at, where all I can use the combiner and where not to use the combiner. Because it's not that I can use combiner everywhere and for all the requirements. There are few restrictions. So we will see that as well. And we will try to exp I will try to explain you with one more example as well. And we will see the hands-on of combiner also. So is it fine? Can we wind up for today? Good. Fine. Okay. Thank you guys for joining today's session. Hope you all understood it. So we will meet at the same time tomorrow. Okay. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.